Counselor Chris Moyes hosts housing clinics to aid Ward 13 residents. Welcome to Region Park TV, I'm Gabriel Meissner and today we bring you the latest on a crucial community initiative led by City Councilor Chris Moyes. With the pressing issue of housing accessibility at the forefront, Councilor Moyes is hosting My Access to Housing Toronto clinics in Region Park and St. Jamestown, offering vital support to Ward 13 residents. From May 9th to May 31st, these clinics aim to assist individuals on the rent year to income housing centralized waiting list or those in need of help applying for RGI housing. Working hard in hand with access to housing and housing help centers, these clinics serve as a lifeline for those seeking affordable housing options. In an exclusive interview with RPTV, we'll be joined by Juliet Akadia, who will shed light on the purpose of these clinics, the process of applying for RGI housing, and any eligibility criteria or documentation requirements for attendees. Stay tuned for Acadia's invaluable insights into this vital community initiative. My name is Juliet Acadia. I'm the Director of Operation and uh, Revitalization for Councillor Moy's office. Juliet, could you please provide us an overview of what uh, My Access to Housing TO sign-up clinics are and what's their purpose? So I'm not sure if you remember, uh, in November or so, uh, there was... Uh, announcement made to people who are currently on RGI waiting list for them to sign up for my uh, access to housing account. And the purpose of that is so that the city of Toronto is able to accurately know how many people are still on the waiting list and also to update their system. And so that it's also easy for um, applicant to update their um, file. So what happened uh, was that many people, uh, especially in our world, they were not or they are not registered to this My Access to Housing account. And most of them, they were re receiving notification that if they don't uh, asset, sign up for this My Access to Housing uh, account and that the application uh, will be uh, refused there was so much panic and we were receiving a lot of calls uh, from constituents. So we decided, you know what, we have to ensure that our community members who are on a uh, waiting list, their application is uh, up to date. So we decided to put this together so that we can provide that support uh, for them to uh, register for my access to housing account so that they can actually be able to continuously participate in the process of choice based and also to ensure that the application is up to date. So that's why our office put this together to assist them. Juliet, can you also provide us how these clinics assist individuals in applying for RGI units, rent gear to income housing? So in each of the unit uh, sessions, uh, we have uh, city staff and also other community agency who can assist people uh, with the application. So for example, if... Uh, the first part of uh, the clinic is to take constituent uh, through uh, the process, the journey, that's what they call it, the, from the beginning that you apply for uh, your uh, housing and the different stages and what to expect and the fulsome explanation. So that's the first part of uh, the clinic. And then the second part then is one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have questions and you want to uh, have staff to look into your application to ensure that everything is there and complete. So that is when after the uh, presentation and then we go through one-on-one -on -one with applicant to provide them a fulsome and individualized uh, response to whatever questions that they have. So, as you know, the housing market right now is very high. If you are someone uh, who is a newcomer to rent a place where their OW or uh, ODSP uh, money is is very less and expecting them to be able to afford a one bedroom or even a room in Toronto is very is hard right so uh, the first thing uh, that we tell people who are here especially newcomers is that housing the RGI uh, housing it is a long-term plan is not a short-term solution to the current situation so the first thing to do, however, is to ensure you actually apply. If you don't put your name on the waiting list, 
there is no hope. There is no uh, something to look forward to, right? So uh, it is very important uh, to be on the wait list because without it, where are you going to go, right? Uh, that being said, though, uh, we also provide information about affordable housing, not necessarily RGI, because the RGI is the long term. The wait list is, is very, very uh, long. Uh, however, there are other options uh, for those who are able to afford it and for those who are able to apply for all the benefits uh, that will help them reduce the rent. Uh, those ones, uh, we do still provide such information. So that's why it's very important uh, for people uh, to come to this clinic uh, because there are information that they may not be aware uh, of and that they can actually benefit. In every clinic, you know, you receive clients from all walks of life. Based on your experience, what kind of clients come to these clinics in the Toronto Center area. So as you know, uh, Toronto Center is 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 huge. Uh, it's huge not in uh, geography, but the people, right? Is 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 we have different uh, kind of ethnicity, uh, demographic, whether it's social, economical, and all of the above. Uh, so that is is very representative of our uh, clinic, uh, and um, there are newcomers, and uh, there are elderly people, and there are people who are already uh, on our GI uh, unit who are looking for uh, more information, especially if they are looking for transfers uh, because of over. Uh, on the housing uh, situation uh, that they're in. So uh, we have all kinds of people, young, old, as diverse as Toronto Centre, is also diverse as our clinic. Why do you think it's important to have this clinic here in Regent Park? Thank you so much for that question. It is very important. So as I said initially, uh, according to the city data, uh, it was shown that uh, Toronto Centre have the least uh, amount of people who have registered for my access to housing. So when we got that information and we said we have to do something, right? So that is one of the motivation uh, that is making us to do this. And what a better place to do that if not Regent Park, right? So um, uh, Regent Park is very dear to our hearts and we have the people, uh, the, the resources in terms of the space and as well as the majority of people who are here, even though uh, that they some of them are currently uh, living in uh, RGI units, but there are lots of families who also they're not uh, on RGI uh, wait list and who need to. So what a better place to do. We have the resources, we have the people, we have the space. And yeah, so that's why we put it all together. And here, I still do have other uh, uh, locations uh, across our world, uh, which is one is Wesley Community Center and also St. Lawrence, but we have the majority uh, of uh, the clinic here. It has been very successful uh, till now. Uh, for the only, we have had two sessions or three and we've helped uh, more than 60 people. And it is, it is really great to see uh, people coming out uh, to get the support. So we are also uh, working with SDFA uh, to come to one of these are sessions, one or two, uh, to provide additional support, such as applying for uh, subsidy for recreation and to help people apply for a subsidy for uh, child care and uh, medical aid and all the services that city provides and so that they can take advantage of, of that. So as for the work that the councillor is doing in the office, he's a passionate uh, person. He cares uh, for the people and uh, we're here uh, to support uh, and then to provide information is power, right? So uh, if you don't know, you don't know. So if we have the capacity 
uh, to bring that information to people so that they can make informed choices and informed decision making. And uh, I think that is very important. Uh, we're here. Our constituency office is always open. Uh, and uh, we're here from um, Monday to uh, Thursday. And uh, we were very intentional when we opened our constituency office uh, so that people know we're in the community. We're here to serve. And uh, don't be a stranger. Come and uh, come visit us. As you know, St. James Town is uh, a highly populated area. And a lot of families are working class family and a lot of immigrants. And when you look at the housing market right now, uh, renting in St. James Town even is, is not so affordable as well. And uh, given the amount of people that we receive in our constituency office uh, looking for housing and uh, you know, wanting information on how to uh, apply for senior housing especially, and we felt that it is important to uh, bring this clinic to St. Jamestown and also to ensure that we are uh, serving our ward uh, as a whole. So not just one part of our ward, but we want to make sure that every corner of our ward receives uh, this information and how to apply for housing specifically. Today is actually the first day uh, we're having uh, one in St. Jamestown and we really, really uh, hope that people will come out because this is very important uh, for this community and we will do as much as possible to publicize it uh, so that people can really uh, show up in St. Jamestown because it's information that is needed and we hope that uh, they can take advantage of it. Yeah, and who can apply for RGL? housing waiting list and what documentation do they need to provide? Certainly. To be eligible for RGI housing, there are certain criteria that you must meet. Uh, the first is your status in Canada. So you have to be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident, or a refugee, or a refugee claimant. Uh, the second one is uh, you must not owe any money to any social housing provider, such as TCAC. And you also must meet the uh, RGI uh, income limit. Uh, for example, you cannot uh, exceed the local housing income uh, that is established by the city, by the provincial government. And that means uh, to be eligible, uh, the total income and the number of individuals in your household would determine the, the unit uh, that you are eligible for. Say, for example, if you are applying for a studio uh, apartment, your income cannot exceed 53500 And if you're applying for one bedroom, your income can't exceed 62500 And if you're applying for a uh, two-bedroom, you cannot make more than 71500 And if you're applying for three-bedroom, uh, you can't uh, make more than uh, 79500 And if you're applying for four to five bedrooms, uh, your income cannot exceed uh, 82500 So the reason for this income limit is so that is people who actually are in need uh, can access uh, affordable housing. So there are also, there are also uh, asset limits uh, that you can uh, own, but you have to always declare them. Um, you are required to declare your asset uh, when you are applying. RGI housing is not a short time housing plan, it's a long term because the waiting list right now is very long. Say, for example, uh, for studio apartment for senior is eight years with time. Uh, for regular studio for families or individual is 10 years with time. For one bedroom is 14 years. For two bedrooms is 13 years. And for three bedroom and four bedroom or five bedroom is 15 years and above. Councillor Moyes, as I said before, he is very dedicated to his work. He uh, wants to support as much people as possible. And he also um, have a team that um, want to support him to succeed and 
pride themselves in supporting individuals. So when we are we approach situation uh, based on needs and also being frank as to what we can provide and what we cannot. How can we use our current position uh, to support people? As Councillor will say, I have the privilege right now to support people. What am I doing with that privilege? So given that we have the capacity to bring together city staff to uh, help individual in need. So we decided to take that work upon ourselves and ensure that we bring staff here and to uh, deliver these crucial uh, services that is greatly needed in the community. So we are very proud as an office, uh, helping people being on the ground. Uh, we have a constituency office where anyone can walk in and get the support that they need. So we're really proud of the work that our councillor is doing and uh, the entire staff is very um, proud to be on the team and we all we want is for our community to succeed and get the information and the help that they need. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website.